SOA stands for Start of Authority, and it's just one of many resource record types in the domain name system. The primary purpose of an SOA record is to provide administrative information about a DNS zone. And in this video, I'll explain exactly what that means, as well as give you plenty of examples. But first, you need to understand what a DNS zone is. In the most simple sense, you can think of a DNS zone as a collection of DNS components. And in this case, we have two DNS zones. You will notice that there is just one domain name in the zone on the left and a few domain names in the zone on the right. Every single DNS zone must have an SOA record and therefore every single domain name will have an SOA record associated with it. Let's use the dig command to do an SOA lookup for my personal website at tonyflorida.com. I know there's a lot of information here, so let's go through it. On the left, you have the M name value, which indicates the primary name server. You can separately use the dig command to look up all of the name servers for a domain with dig, the domain name followed by capital NS, and in this case, you'll see the primary name server with some other name servers too. Back to the SOA record, next to M name is the R name, which is actually an email address in disguise replace this dot with an at symbol and that gives you the administrator's email address for this zone. The serial number is next and whenever a certain change is made to the zone, the serial number is updated which is a signal to other servers to stay in sync. This can be any positive number up to 2 to the power of 32. The rest of the values have to do with timing. You have refresh, retry, expire, and minimum all of which are measured in seconds. Refresh is how long the secondary server should wait before checking for SOA changes. Retry is how long a secondary server should wait after a failure. Expire is how long before a secondary server considers the zone to be dead. And minimum, also sometimes called time to live, is how long all resource records in the zone should be kept in cache. You can add the multi-line argument to your dig command to make the output a little bit nicer, and alternatively you can use the nslookup command to query the same information by typing set type equals SOA, then type in the name of the domain name, hit enter, and you'll get back something like this. Most of the time, an SOA record is automatically created for you when you buy your domain name. In Google Domains, you can see the SOA record for my domain under the required section, and this information is read only. There is no option to add your own SOA record. This video was a basic overview of Start of Authority Records, and I hope it provided some value to you. If you're interested in these type of videos, then subscribe to this channel and check out this playlist right here for more information on common DNS record types.